Morning, everyone, and thanks very much for joining me. This is the morning market review with myself, Russell Shaw, senior market specialist at FXM. It's uh, Friday, the 28th of October. My email address is rshawatfxm.com. Just going to go ahead and bring up our uh, high risk investment warning. Can I uh, just confirm you guys can hear me and uh, see the screen? Hey, Shadrick. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, bringing up our market commentaries disclaimer. Hey, Anna. Morning. Nice to have you on the webinar. Okay, and here's our references. <clears throat> I think we'll just go through Forex Factory. Uh, Oh, I'm still waiting for it to come up, or is it? Uh, here we go. All right. Um, so we've got the uh, core PCE coming out today. Uh, this is not so, this is the Fed's preferred measure of um, inflation. Uh, this is so we won't, we won't get a we won't get a median off of this. Because the median is derived from the uh, from the CPI, um, but nevertheless, this is going to be very important. So keep an eye out on that. And um, with that said, let's just go through to um, the Bloomberg emails. Five things to start your day. A first headline reads: Balancing Act. UK Prime Minister. Rishi Sunak and Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, taking no options off the table, including windfall taxes on banks and energy firms as they consider how to plug a £35 billion budget shortfall. Um, I'm just going to go to the next headline. Uh, Putin's nuclear. President Vladimir Putin lashed out at the US and Europe over his war in Ukraine, heaped praise on Saudi Arabia and reiterated support for China's claim to Taiwan as he sought to cost Russia, Russia as a champion of, of conservative values against Western liberalism. He has um, accused the US and allies of seeking global domination by pouring weapons into Ukraine and denied, and denied intending to use nuclear weapons. All right, the next one is um, interesting, low, ultra low. The Bank of Japan stood by its ultra low interest rates, pushing back against lingering market speculation. It will adjust policy as it continues to predict inflation will cool below 2% next year. Governor Kuroda and his board left their negative rate, 10 year yield cap and asset purchases unchanged at the end of a two day policy meeting Friday. Kuroda continues to hold firm as the last anchor of low global rates, just the day after the ECB went ahead with another jumbo rate hike. Uh, next headline, uh, Elon Musk completed his $44 billion acquisition of Twitter, according to people familiar with the matter, and the social network now become a private company. So effectively, it's going to uh, delist. Among Ma Musk's first move, changing the leadership, Departures include CEO Parag Agrawal, Vijaya Gale, and the head, the head of legal policy and trust, CFO Ned Siegel, and Sean Edgar, who has been general counsel at Twitter since 2012. So this is going to be interesting, um, just to keep an eye on it, of course, it's going to be delisted. European stocks are set to follow their Asian counterparts lower as investors absorb with mixed US economic data and soft results from tech giants. They'll have more earnings to pass through today with VW, Equinor, Exxon, among a flurry of names reporting. Okay, to keep an eye out for that PCE. Hi hey Howard. Morning, nice to have you in the webinar. All right, let's take a look at the real yield again. It is starting to roll over here. 
Mm, let's actually go through to the weekly, see if there is any dent in the RSR. So I'm just bringing up the RSR for the weekly real rate. Yeah, okay, so it's starting to normalize. You can see it's curling, it's curling over. So um, almost below that um, oversold level. Um, let's just go back to the daily here. Um, and you can see it's uh, it's coming down. And of course, the dollars come down with it. Um, yesterday, an odd day because real rates came down, but the dollar to end up. I think that the circumstances around that uh, would certainly be uh, tech earnings have really, especially sort of the FANG stocks, have been poor. And I think the um, I think the ECB, uh, I, I didn't, I wasn't particularly sort of um, enamored with sort of the, the, the press conference. Never, nevertheless, the markets didn't like it either, and they um, pushed the, the euro down. Um, so um, I think that's uh, reflected also in um, this blue candle for the dollar. But again, I would uh, submit that the real rate is um, really the uh, the key driver. Yeah, and, and earnings, I guess. But um, earnings, um, well, we, we've gone into we've we definitely. I think we can safely say we're in stage two of a bear market, right? That declining earnings. Um, I don't think there is a linear kind of, um, I don't think that it's strictly linear. So the question is, have we passed that panic selling? That, that's really what we, that we've got to um, try and come to terms with. And it's difficult um, if we just go ahead and take a look at the FANG stocks. So I'm just changing the real rate here to ban. So we're just going to look at the FXM uh, basket here. And um, they've just been hammered um, over here, just over the last uh, two sessions. And um, see they've been and if we take where they've come from, let's just go to the weekly. And you can see here um, the real rate. Uh, let's start from here. The real rate, dollar, bank stocks. Okay. So the clear, the clear. Uh, correlations. Uh, one would be positive for the dollar, one would be uh, negative um, fang. So again, uh, if we get to a point where the real rates are have reached that terminal rate, which came up yesterday, remember, uh, have we reached the, are we, are we um, seeing terminal rates still being adjusted upwards? And I think that they will be as long as there is um, that median inflation. But as soon as that median inflation gives, um, I think the um, the tech stocks have been hammered to the point, you know, that they will become fairly interesting. Um, don't take this as any sort of recommendation, but something that I would be uh, certainly considering uh, investigating further. And um, one real dark horse here is Netflix. Let me show you this. So I'm going to go to the daily chart here, and uh, we're just going to bring Netflix up. So Netflix has been, um, you know, hammered. Its um, results have been generally poor, but the the last results um, showed growth um, in terms of um, the subscribers. The the revenue per subscriber was down, but that was a that was because of the foreign exchange, and um, 
I was taking a look at this yesterday. I mean, you can see this big gap down. So this earnings over here. So this earnings announcement, this was first quarter earnings, really just pulverized the stock over here. Um, and you can see that it's um, just been uh, obliterated. Um, uh, um, however, let's, um, let's put in a few indicators here. And again, I want to just stress, you know, um, take this as education only um, because uh, we're still in a very difficult market. Uh, but let's add in Stan Weinstein's um, phases here. Okay. So here's the distribution, it's kind of a head and shoulders almost. Well, I think it is the head and shoulders, sort of left shoulder, head, right shoulder. There, there's the distribution. Okay. Yeah, you've got the markdown phase, right? That's the markdown phase. Uh, look at this. This looks like accumulation potentially, right? So usually, according to Weinstein, is after after accumulation comes markup. Now, whether the markup is going to develop or not, obviously, is going to depend on um, the fundamentals because they've had extremely challenging, um, they're in a very challenging um, environment. Competition is now heating up, so who's going to sort of survive the competitive pressures? What's going to happen to margins? They're introducing ad um, revenue. Uh, sharing of accounts is going to be probably a little bit more difficult. Um, all that stuff um, has to be um, certainly considered. And if they can't deliver on that, then of course, you know, um, the charts don't mean anything. But let's add now another level. So there's another two levels I want to add to this. Let's just add another level. So we're going to put in a moving average. Now, Weinstein generally looks at weekly charts where you using it daily here he uses a 30 week exponential moving average so we're going to we're going to use a 150 week exponential moving average which is the same thing let's just put that in Okay, so once the distribution completed over here, uh, it drops below the moving average, and then of course the moving average turns down, and um, now it's crossed above the moving average, and uh, we want to see if this moving average turns up, and if a price can start dragging that moving average up, but well, that obviously would be some something con to consider. I think it's a, a bullish development. The next level, though, I think is the most important level. Okay, we're going to look at volume here. All right, so let's add in um, the unbalanced volume, and that's why I'm using daily. OBV you can only use on daily. Uh, you're just going to have to take my word for this. If you use it on a weekly or monthly, you're going to get a distorted indicator. So just use it on the daily. Making it just a little clearer on the R's. I'll make it red. Okay, so look what happens here. Here's the gap down. This is off to Q1's earnings, right? Here's the gap down. Look how the market sells out of it. The volume coming out and that gap down. Uh, this was just an awful. Um, sort of punishing day for the um, for the stock, but then it gets really interesting. So now we go through to Q2 earnings, which weren't great, by the way. They they lost they lost um, subscribers, but perhaps perhaps see I haven't I haven't actually looked at the fundamentals on a relative basis, but I would suspect that you will see that 
um, there was declines at a declining rate. In other words, you're starting to move in the sort of the right direction in terms of momentum. Um, but I, I need to check that. I'm just assuming that, right? So you've kind of got over here, look at the volume jump here. There's a huge spark here. Yeah? And this is right after Q2 earnings. Huge spark here. Yeah? So some somebody's accumulating. What was why is this somebody thought that the Q2 earnings mm, promising? Who who would be who would be buying Netflix at this stage? Value investors. They they've kind of seen something. They reckon, well, maybe this is like a good price for an asset. Um, again, only time's going to prove whether that's true or not, right? So, but there is a big um, sign of accumulation here. Q3 earnings come out. Take a look at the volume here. More purchasing. More purchasing. So you've got this base here, this accumulation base, but you've really got a nice accumulation. Let's make this a different color. You've got a real nice accumulation going on as well. Now, where it ends up, I can't tell you. Okay, because we can't we can't predict if there's um, you know if the competition um, hurts Netflix, well the share price would obviously reflect that. But the point is here yeah, on a, a Stan Weinstein um, methodology, this has all of a sudden become pretty interesting, and um, I think it's one perhaps just to sort of um, keep an eye on. Um, just to see how the Weinstein method plays out, right? The the challenge here, of course, it's still a growth stock, Netflix. Um, if the uh, interest rate jumps, and I suspect, you know, that the um, th that may be the case, dependent on how the median inflation behaves, then I think Netflix still is gonna still gonna have headwinds. You see, this chart. This chart is looking really interesting, but I'm not sure the um, I'm not sure the complexities of the market have really disappeared yet. Now, at some stage, it will turn into a, a bull market. I'm not sure we're there yet, right? So, um, but this is certainly something that um, caught my eye. Now, um, this would be um, sort of the value model. This would be the value model. And um, this is a potential uh, dark horse. I often speak about Netflix with uh, my brother-in-law, and we kind of um, have both uh, really not not liked it at all. But yesterday we actually had a conversation about it, and uh, we're both watching this. Um, we haven't allocated anything to it yet, but it's certainly something that we've added to our watch list. Um, all right, so I wanted to show you that. Um, let's take a look at some of um, the usual instruments. All right, um, yeah, 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 yeah. So Rob's saying this is probably to include adverts, and so that's what we said. You know, I said uh, the ad revenue we've got to check. The fact that they also um, making, um, I think, the sharing of accounts a little bit um, more difficult, which I think you've got to do. Um, all of that, Rob, seems to be uh, being discounted into the price. Um, so it's definitely one that we can, um, I think, keep an eye on here. Um, I also think there's other things on the uh, um, potentially on the um, on the cards there. I think that um, there may be. I mean, this is I can't say th um, this for certain, but I seem to have read an article. You know, they're going to pick up some exclusive rights to some sports. I don't know if that's true or not. You know, but for example, maybe if they get exclusive Grand Prix or something, uh, uh, which is just sort of sp speculation. Don't take that as um, anything else but sort of you know but I'm saying so all of that's kind of I think probably 
um, areas that it would want to go uh, head towards. Um, so here we've got the DAX. Uh, this swing over here, uh, we mentioned yesterday, um, and now it's showing a little bit more um, sort of uh, resistance. So uh, this LP question mark is something I think we've got to just keep in mind. Let's go down to the daily here. Mm, so you had this real tremendous amount of uh, momentum right here. And I think that we want to see if it maintains above 80. Clearly, if it maintains above 80, that's a good thing. We're in, uh, we're in zone uh, one, that's a good thing. And we've got the expansion in Bollinger's, that's a good thing. Um, what I think Bear, what Bear's watching is um, yesterday's price action. You've got a, uh, a doji there, right? So price is moving up, effect effectively being rejected. Price is moving down, effectively being rejected. Ending flat, so uh, uh, uncertain day yesterday, and I think that's um, I think that's because of um, number one ECB, number two, um, I think the fact that uh, that sort of tech earnings, although I wouldn't say that DAX is reflective of um, technology, I think the the, the fact that um, earnings are in a decline makes it fairly clear that we're at least in stage two of the of the bear market. And the question is, have we hit that panic uh, capitulation, that panic selling? And that's, again, something we're going to have to try and uh, figure out for ourselves. Um, now, if we were in zone, if we're in zone one, if we've got the strong momentum, um, although there is some hesitancy, I think the I think the hourly chart here is going to become uh, uh, interesting, and I think we should watch it. Uh, let me just add the pivots here. All right, and I just want to add the uh, is in Dina as well. Mm. Okay, where is my percent D sideline? That's odd. Oh wait, here it is. Solid line. There we go. I was looking at the wrong one. Okay. Um, so I just think that uh, because we're in zone one, because we've got the strong momentum. Um, are we going to get some um, movement off of the support levels here? So again, um, keep an eye on the triggers, right? Keep an eye on the triggers. Now this S1 level, just looking at it straight away, um, is interesting because there's a nice um, confluence of support here. Let me just line this up. So not only do we have the S1 level, we've got some nice price um, support here as well. So this S1 level looks fairly um, significant <clears throat> and it may hold. Um, again, I don't know if it's going to hold. We've got the daily chart looking pretty good, but there is that uncertainty that's crept in. I think we want to see the EMAs, the stochastic um, signals. And then, of course, even if we get those signals, it's really important that the momentum makes its way through to the upper quintile and holds. Once we get there, I think uh, we probably have got some legs here. Um, let's take a look at the euro. So we're looking at the euro yesterday. It kind of disappointed me, the euro. Uh, it did look for a moment that we were going to get um, a ready after the ECB, uh, but that faded very quickly. So um, So you can see that yesterday's price actions actually was quite damaging. So you've got this big setting tail here. Um, 
But if we go through to the uh, to the daily chart, we still are in um, zone one, okay? And we are um, potentially getting through to this um, 80 level. Again, uh, this is gonna be now largely driven, I would suspect, by uh, real rates. Oh, they're not a, I took them down. Okay, but we, we wanna to, we to keep an eye on those, those real rates. Um, and those real rates are gonna be hugely influenced by this 230 announcement, ZA 130 announcement UK, hugely influenced. So if we get a, if we get a strong PCE re reading, real rate's gonna jump up, uh, dollar's gonna jump, euro's gonna come down. Um, likewise, if we get a soft, softer reading, this sort of a downside surprise, then I think of that benefits euro. So challenging day ahead just based on that. Um, and what I was looking at yesterday, so uh, this was the this was the euro coming down here, and then uh, this was really these these two cans here. So uh, this was the statement, this big sort of red can was the statement, and then this this long legged doji here. This was the press conference. So I was looking at that, and then um, what I saw was. Uh, a very strong blue candle afterwards and um, it looked to me as if we might have got a reference candle reversal here and it was pretty late in the set uh, pretty pretty late in the in the hour I think we had sort of maybe 15 minutes left I think subject to correction maybe 20 minutes left and then everything just got sold down and um, any bullishness sort of any sort of bar the dip completely evaporated so um, I was looking, I was just waiting for this hourly can to end, I was waiting for it to end. And then when it ended, it was certainly not the way I wanted it to look. And I moved on. Um, so that was a, that was a pity. Um, but I think it's worth just keeping an eye on whether we still have a bar the dip opportunity here. Again, I think DCE is gonna be um, a huge um, influence here. Yes, we are in zone one. We do have a good uh, daily momentum. There has been some technical damage. Uh, are we able to recover? I don't know. Let's see if the signals give us anything. And even if we get the signals, uh, we really have nothing until we get to the 80 and hold. Okay. We really have nothing until we get to the 80 and hold. So um, challenging environment again. Um, I did. When I was looking at this, when I was looking at this, um, I did throw on a fib. Let's see if I can find the fib settings. I think I used it on here, and it was still it was too it was still sh uh, shallow. It's quite shallow over here, so I was thinking that would maybe be a negative, and it turned out you know that was a negative. But you know I think I'm reaching for some sort of technical help there. The point is that the, the, signal, the signals never really materialized. The pullback here is a little bit more um, meaningful. So we've got a, um, a decent sort of pullback to this sort of 50, 62%. Uh, whilst I don't think the FIPS in of themselves really mean anything, I do think that um, if the uptrend is to continue, you know, uh, deep pullbacks become quite compelling. So the, we're starting to get fairly deep here. Um, the obvious question is, what happens if we fall into 20 and hold? Well, then it's, you know, then it's game over for the euro for the for its current for its current leg. Then I think it's going to threaten to fall back into zone two. So um, that's just something I think to um, to consider. All right. Um, if there's any anything else, you guys. Um, I'll ask, go ahead and um, type those in. From the month, or I think it's the month of November, I'm, I'm taking two weeks off. Um, I've, got, I've got CFA level two coming up, which is just, uh, I'm, I'm still far behind. So I've got to try and sort of pull a rabbit out of a hat then. Um, but that's going to be around about the 9th of November. All right, anything else? Um, yeah, the, the, the day trading series is finished. Yeah, it's finished.
All right, let's uh, let's wrap up here, and uh, we'll chat on Monday. Have a good weekend, guys.